Today we're going to look at how to create a topographic profile on a topographic map. The first thing that we want to do is to figure out where on the map we're creating a profile for. So if we take a look at the graph itself, we can see that we're looking for a line labeled B, C. So when you look at the map, we can see that that is here and here. The next thing that we want to do is to label all of the contour lines that come in contact with this line. And to label them, we need to figure out what the interval is. We can see that the first line here, B, is labeled as 550, but we need to figure out what the ones in between B and C are going to be. So if we look at the contour interval, we can see that the interval is 10 meters. So that means each line is changing by 10 meters. Well, we need to figure out if it's decreasing or increasing as we go across here. And what we can see is there's a brook that's running right through the middle along line B, C. So if there is water right here, we can that'll automatically tell us that we're decreasing in elevation as we get closer to that. So if this is 550 and our interval is 10 meters, this next line here would be 540. And we'll just work our way across. This next one would be 530. And then this is also 530, this line right here. If you follow that around, you can see that that's still the same contour line. So we'll label it 530. It gets kind of tight in here, so try to label it the best you can. Um, but now what we're going to do is start to increase. You can see that this solid line right here is 550. So once we get to the other side of that brook, we're going to increase our elevation. So this next line here is 540. And then that solid line is already labeled as 550. We don't have to label these because we're not going to be plotting them. They're not going to be on our profile. So we can skip over them, and then C is 550. And if you want to label it right next to letter C, that's fine um, so that you have that labeled. Next, we're going to take, and you want to turn the paper. Now, the reason that I labeled them up here is because you have to put the paper underneath the line. You've got to make sure that you line it up correctly. You cannot put it up above it. Um, if we go ahead and we put our mark right here, for B, we label that B, and we put a mark right here, we label that C, okay? We take that, we bring it down to our graph, B matches up with B, and C matches up with C. But if, say you had a map where they had all of the numbers labeled down here, and you went to put your paper there, and you mark, covered them all up with the paper, so you decided that it would be better to just turn the whole thing around, and you do that, well, what end up, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have B and C reversed when you go to put it onto the profile graph. So don't ever turn the paper completely upside down. Always, you really only have to kind of turn it a little bit to get it lined up. Um, so once we get that set, we'll go ahead and finish marking the rest of the contour lines that touch the paper. And this part is really important to make sure that you label them and you mark them as accurately as possible. Um, as you know, contour lines, the spacing between them helps us figure out what the elevation is like, what the gradient is like. So if they're really close together, like they are here, that's telling us that it's probably going to be pretty steep. And then over here, the spacing is a lot farther, so it's going to be a little bit flatter. If you start changing where you're marking the contour lines on your scrap paper, you're going to change what the look of them the profile would be. So that's why you've got to be really careful with your marks. So the first one we already did, we need to go ahead and label it. Don't skip this step. Don't say I'll just look at the map above as you're plotting them. It's just so much easier if you do it right now as you go. So this one was 540. We'll go to the next one, 530. And so you can see how much easier it is to label these because we labeled them on the line already. We don't really have to think about what we're going to label them because they're already marked for us. 540. That one's pretty close. That's going to be 550. And then we had our last line, which was also 550. Now, before you go and try to plot this on the graph, what I would recommend you do is take the paper away and then put it back 
and see if they all line up. And if you see that some of them are not where they should be, so maybe that one's over here a little bit, you're going to get that wrong on your profile when it's graded. So fix it. Okay, so this is a really good last check for you before you do the final step. And if those all match up the way they should, go ahead and go to your profile. And we're going to take that first mark that we made, the 550 over here for B. We're going to line that up with the side of the graph. This should always stay lined up with this side of the graph. Um, so that way, again, your spacing is uh, maintained. So that way your paper is not sliding back and forth. It should always be on that first line. So we're going to slide that up to 550. Now you don't want to put it right on top of 550. You want to be just a little bit below it. And then you put your dot on the line. Your dot short should not be below or above the line. It needs to be on it because if you're plotting 550, it needs to be on the line for 550. Then we'll take our paper, slide it down to our next line, which is 540. Again, keeping that first mark lined up with the side of the graph. And if it slides a little bit, just put it back. We'll put a point at 540 and just keep working your way through plotting each of the points. Now one thing that you need to pay attention to is the size of the points that you make. You want to make sure that they're big enough that you can see them, um, but not so big that they're not accurate. Um, when you draw your line in a minute, you need to be able to see those points still. So if your line is, or your point is too small, it's going to get covered up by your by your line. So you want to make them so that they're pretty visible. All right, so that's what our profile looks like with the points. We're not done. Do not ever stop at this point. You're not going to get any credit for the graph if you have not um, done the last step, which is to connect the points. So only connect the points that are given. All right, so in this case, we have points all the way across to the edge. But say the last point was in and it was right here, don't go beyond it anywhere, okay? You want to just stop at that last point. So we'll start with our first point. We'll go right there. We'll go over to this next point, and this is where you have to be very careful, okay? Um, you uh, want to go down just a little bit. I always try to go about halfway, all right? Halfway between this line and this line. Do not go straight across. Do not go up above it. You need to go down a little bit because what we're representing right here is the valley. This is 530 and 530. There's a river right here, or a brook. We're representing the valley that's right there. Um, so you've got to kind of curve that a little. And just like I said, it can't touch the line below or the line above. And then we'll continue on. Go to our next point. And again, we've got another situation where we cannot just go straight across. And now what we're doing is we're looking at this part of the map. And you can see that the um, elevation is 550 and 550. If we keep looking right here, though, you can see that the elevation is increasing a little bit. So what we're seeing is just the slight top of this hill here. So it's not going to be real dramatic, but you definitely cannot just go straight across. It's not perfectly flat from here to here. So we're going to kind of go up just a little bit. Again, I just best way to go is just go about halfway and then stop with your last point. So you do not want to go down, you do not want to go straight across. When your profiles are graded, there are two main things that are looked at, and that's that your points are exactly where they need to be. A transparency will be put on top of your profile, and your points need to be directly underneath the points for the profile key. And the other thing is that your point, your lines are, um, your points are connected with a smooth line correctly. So by that, meaning they're curved where they should be, they're not flat, they're not going straight across. So just keep in mind that your points, you know, again, those need to be visible also since that's one of the things that you're being graded on and your line needs to be done correctly.